to the MLA responsible for environment. Uh, do you have a group now, a committee that prepares or um, looks to the future in preparation for our adaptation to the climate change? Um, I think you need, if you don't have one already, you will need a group to address these issues and concerns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, within the Environment Department, it's not really a formal council, but we do have staff um, that seven of them congregate on a regular basis uh, in terms of uh, preparing our adaptation to the climate change. Thank you, Ludi uh, We One thing we addressed was the greenhouse uh, gas, uh, the ozone layer that we have. At the time, there were rumors, words of uh, having a hole in the northern and southern hemisphere at the poles. Um, any update on that? Because that ozone hole would allow uh, dangerous UV rays to come in to the surface of the earth. Um, I have not really been uh, kept updated. And so I'd like to know the current status of the ozone hole at both the North and the South Pole. You have any update for me? Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> the hole that you're referring to um, it's not making the news as much. We know it was receding or getting smaller, uh, but I guess uh, within um, it was due to different set of factors and they, the global village was cutting back on harmful activity and so the uh, the last time we heard the holes were getting smaller was the last time I heard. Thank you. I'm 37 years old. I'm reversing my numbers, so that's how, I, how old I am now. And the minister is here. Thank you. And when we had a uh, meeting with uh, women earlier this morning, we talked about uh, berries, for example, how it's affecting um, the collecting, like the times people collect and they're, they're finding less. So there was a question that somebody wanted me to raise is about that. And what do you think about that, that the lack of berries? And also we're finding that there's more earthquakes in around the south and around the regions in the world and we're finding that this could be the case here in the north so some somebody wanted that question raised as to what kind of planning has the government uh, have in place for emergencies thank you i don't know too much about berries I know they're tiny, and my thinking is that I think that it, it's something that has to do with the changing weather, perhaps. Uh, if it's a certain type of weather, they, t they don't tend to grow. My own thinking, I cannot really elaborate because I'm not, not to expertise in that area, so I know they're tiny, though. And as your question about preparedness, I know in Nunavut that we have an emergency preparedness plan in place, and in Baffin, and in Greenland, I realize that there could be earthquakes between here and um, here and uh, Greenland, Baffin Island and Greenland, so there could possibly be um, problems. But I believe that there was also an earthquake closer to Resolute. I know there's uh, research in place, and the governments are aware if there's a problem with buildings, for example, or if there was a massive evacuation that had to take place, there are plans in place. And for the time being, we know that earthquakes are minor, 
uh, for the time being. Thank you. Make. Thank you. My name is Charlie Khumwaktuk from Pannaktuk. My question is uh, not so much related to the environment, but my thinking is that as a resident of the north in the Arctic region, all the people of the Arctic regions, and just not in Nunavut, even in Alaska, Russia, thinking about the Arctic areas of the circumpolar regions, and for those of us that live in these cold regions, and we are all affected by uh, using the electricity like uh, and the need to use generators. So for power plants in Pannaktu, and maybe not necessarily in Nunavut, well, not necessarily in Pannaktu and Baffin, but maybe throughout Nunavut, have you considered with ideas as to what kind of technologies that you might be able to use as alternative uh, sources of fuel or uh, energy. And like um, using the dams, um, utilizing water and from rivers, and utilizing under underwater um, equipment, or perhaps wind turbine, perhaps solar energy. So as a government, what kind of plans or ideas do you have circulating? If um, you could let me know what kind of ideas you have on this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And last fall, well, there was a meeting. And we were talking about and brainstorming alternative sources of energy, like the wind turbine was brought up, and solar uh, ener solar power. And right now in Nunavut, we know that they operated by diesel only. Right now, is that the, that's the only source of energy we have in Nunavut, and we know that it's, uh, they have to be well operated and in running order. And how we can start to use it less and less and to try to use alternative uh, sources like the sun and uh, other sources. I know for the wind um, turbines, I know there was a test project in Rankin and Cambridge Bay. They, we found that they, they broke, and so it was not a very uh, good finding. And as for the sun, we can't use solar panels because there's not a lot of sun in the uh, winter months. And so, as far as the hydro dam in Iqaluit, there is a plan and consideration for something closer to Iqaluit. However, it was going to cost too much. And we don't know if it's going to proceed because of the costs involved. And for the time being, For now, diesel operated, um, how we can start to move away from that, that's a tough question as a government. And in the fall, we had this meeting. And there was going to be a report and a study to further think about ideas. Thank you. And Thank you, Mr. Chairman, because I always say that because I attend so many meetings. I'm quite pleased that we have Inuit in positions as ministers. I want to just say two things that are more recent. I don't want to talk about something too much from the past. And we're talking about climate change, uh, particularly the ice conditions. We are aware that it's changing and many people, especially harvesters, tend to lose their equipment. I'm wondering if you have something in place where compensation will be considered by the government to compensate harvesters who have lost all their equipment um, when they fall through the ice, and also the people who have um, small buildings, hut shacks that are all over Nunavut. 
and sometimes there are um, problems when they are encountered by polar bears and a lot of these cabins are uh, ruined by the uh, animals and particularly by polar bears. So I'm wondering, as an HTO, we are quite aware of these problems that exist for a long time now, especially in Iqaluit. However, um, we were informed that there needs to be more boarded up cabins uh, by nailing them in and and beyond that there would be a compensation made uh, as to the contents and belongings but we would like to push for that for compensation to be made uh, by damage caused by polar bears thank you mr chairman thank you as for the question you asked about the ice conditions, and we are, um, we know that there's thinning ice, and we t we we hear about snowmobiles that fall through the ice, and right now. And if if it's uh, an accidental fall, there can be a, a, play, a, a process in place where the harvester can go to the wildlife office and, and fill out uh, some information to them. And if they are approved, and uh, how much they make, and, and all these rules that have to be in place as to what the harvester, and if it's a full-time thing or not, there needs to be, um, like they have to follow certain procedures. Right now, as to cabin owners, and there's also a um, compensation program in place. If, if they were boarded up, perhaps thicker, thicker plywood, or if you can close up the windows, they can be compensated if they had taken the right steps to protect their cabins, and if they were um, destroyed by either grizzly bears or polar bears, um, they can be they can try to um, apply to the renewable resource officer, and so there are also um, policies and programs in place for this, and we could we could look into it a little bit further as to what the compensation is. I could say that there's there's something that's already placed that not enough people apply. Uh, it's a fund that uh, it's hardly applied to, so it never really runs out. And as for the money, it's something just people aren't aware about, aware of it. I'm quite pleased that I was here this afternoon to be with you. And I'm quite pleased to take the questions that you had and the, um, you know, the programs and services we provide as a territory. It's it's quite an exciting time to be in this department, and we have to be aware and uh, promote our programs that are geared to Nunavut. And we are here to serve the people. We are not uh, the people that are running uh, Nunavut. You, the people, are running Nunavut. So the federal government are also um, the ones that have um, the, the rules and the laws as well. And they are the ones that provide um, other programs. I know there's going to be more people coming this afternoon. So I'm just going to end there. And thank you for the time.